This occasion is, uh, I think, special, rather very special for reasons more than one. Firstly, we are breaking into new areas and therefore extending and moving towards the fulfillment of the mandate of the university, wherein the upliftment of the quality of life of our people would be one of the uh, fulfillments. Secondly, and probably more importantly, the, the, the wheel seem to have turned a full circle and now the mountain is moving to Muhammad, the Muhammad is not, if Muhammad is not moving to mountain. There was a, there was a period when uh, the university had to convince several councils, approach them, plead with them, at times argue with them that this system of education is a valid philosophy for self-learning. But today, because of partly because of that awareness and partly because of the dynamism uh, which uh, the present dispensation of, dent distance, uh, of uh, Dental Council of India has exhibited, we are here where the initiative in fact was taken by Dental Council of India and for that on behalf of Indira Gandhi National Open University, I have no hesitation in expressing our most sincere gratitude and appreciation for this initiative. Friends, Indira Gandhi National Open University, as we know today, is the largest single open university in the world. With 1.5 million students being offered education in 35 countries across the globe. We are offering programs at different levels starting from awareness level for community development, the certificate level programs, diploma programs and degree programs and the most of the degree programs are now at the first degree, sec uh, the master's degree and the, post uh, and the doctoral degree. We, we have as of today 125 programs of which 14 are the, at the doctor level, 16 are at the master's level, an equal number at the first uh, degree level and then we have postgraduate diploma and uh, um, undergraduate diploma programs. The, the, the diversity of the programs and the heterogeneity of the learners and to be able to meet their needs we, we had to devise uh, what I what we call a multiple instructional package where not only print but audio video radio educational television teleconferencing video conferencing are all part of apart from the face to face intervention which we provide in in uh, counseling as well as for the skill development component and for that the university has developed a very effective network of the regional services, uh, support services for the students across the country. As of now, we have 64 regional centers, 33 of these are ours and rest are recognized and uh, nearly 1500 study centers across the country. Beyond that, we have 37 partner institutions in those 35 countries where we are offering education. All that I will intend to say is that today two national institutions are joining hand for providing services and developing programs which would go a long way in improving the quality of life 
of our people and providing them better services even in the remotest corners. With this hope, I once again welcome you all to this August occasion, which is path-breaking in some sense. Thank you. IGNO is revolutionizing education. Today, every sixth student in India in higher education is a student of IGNO. The Government of India, the Ministry of Human Resource Development have identified distance education to be given a special focus. And this is reflected in terms of the funding that we receive. The funding for IGNO in terms of development for this year is even more than Indian Institute of Science Bangalore. It is more than Indian Institutes of Information Technology. There is a lot of credential and credit that this system has grown and has been recognized by various government and non-government agencies. And I may mention to you the type of students, the student profiles that we have. It's very interesting. On one hand, we have developed a program for Panchayati Raj functionaries. And some of our programs are even for those neo-literates, where we use pictures and diagrams to provide teaching. Then very extensively we provide teachers training program in hundreds of thousands of teachers across the country. We have unfortunately 3,500,000 teachers in the system who are not trained in pedagogy. The various governments have appointed them and their dropout rates is pretty high and the government of India has given a special focus to improve the quality of education and that means to improve the quality of training of teachers. And this massive work IGNO is doing. IGNO has been given responsibility for various states, for central schools, and all those areas. From that on, we also cover our students who are like officials of Indian Administrative Service. We signed an MOU with Lal Bahadur Shastri Academy for Administration. And we are training IS trainees jointly with Lal Bahadur Shastri Academy of Administration. 57 IS trainees who have joined training last year in July are our students. One year they will be studying at the Lal Badu Shastri Academy and the next year wherever they are posted they will be full time IGNO students and we will be giving them a master's degree jointly as the IS Academy and IGNO. The next is which is again just to give you an idea the type of interventions that we are making in areas which are most uncommon for any institution, educational institution in the country or even the world. The Ministry of External Affairs contacted us two years ago and we had a long discussion and after the discussion it emerged that there is no need to invite mid-level Indian diplomats world over from different embassies and high commissions to Delhi to train them. With the technologies that we have and the technologies that IGNO has developed, it should be possible for us to provide online education and training to mid-level Indian diplomats. And I am very pleased to mention that we have been doing it for two years. This has been very cost effective. It has been highly appreciated. It is very effective. And the Government of India, the Ministry of External Affairs, only three months ago decided that now they should also request us to train senior members of Indian Foreign Service at the Joint Secretary's level. And this MOU we signed only one and a half months ago. We have started developing programs, online programs, for training Indian diplomats at the Joint Secretary level within the ministry here and wherever they are posted across the world. More recently, I got a phone call from Chief Justice of India. And he wanted me to make a presentation before five senior most judges of the Supreme Court, including himself, about possibilities of intervention of IGNO for training the judicial system. Judges and other functionaries in the system. And the need for this arose from a joint collaborative program that IGNO had done two years ago with Human Rights Commission of India and Human Rights Commission of Canada where we have developed a distance education program on human rights and the Chief Justice of India thought that another program that we have launched with World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, which is one of the first in the country in the area of intellectual property rights, was another program which was very close to what he would like us to train the judges and functionaries because not many of them know what are the IPR rules and regulations. 
what happens when IPR regime becomes very functional in the country. And therefore, it is needed that somebody should provide these inputs. A presentation was made by myself in this very important meeting in Supreme Court of India. And I am very pleased to mention that they decided that ICNO should be given this responsibility of training judiciary both at central level and at state level. They have 14 institutions across the country for training at the state level and we are developing a network to connect them first and then develop modules for training jointly in collaboration with them. These are all few directions of our development. But I would like to mention why, why people look forward to IGNO. IGNO has developed a system of very good cooperation and understanding with institutions like the one we are going to have today. Our course writers and program writers are some of the best people available in the country. For example, for technology courses, the authors are mostly from IITs. For management courses, many authors are from IAMs. So what we are able to do is that we have very successfully been able to get coordination support of some of the best scholars available in the country. And it's again very satisfying to observe that whenever we have approached distinguished scholars and experts. They have taken some pride in joining IGNO. It's mostly it happens that with great pleasure they accept to collaborate and cooperate because they think that through IGNO they can reach, have a very extensive reach. Another thing which might be of interest to Distance Education Council and any such organization is that IGNO is developing a lot of national networks. It's not only for our own students, but the government of India appointed a, a national core group to provide and connect the country in, for educational purposes using all sorts of connectivity. And perhaps you might have heard the EduSat was launched in September 2004 to meet the requirement of education across the country and to reach the grassroots end. And this responsibility was also given to us and now we have developed six national networks out of which Prasar Bharti came forward to support one of our networks through DTH. That means we can talk to 131 places across the country face to face. It is a virtual classroom connecting 134 locations. And this is also connected by a facility where you, if you have a television and if you have a top box of 4000 rupees, you can receive our programs putting anywhere in the country and even countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Myanmar. Actually the government of Myanmar was very keen to get connected to our network for providing education in Myanmar and the President of India took very keen interest that IGNO should support them. I will end up my brief introduction about IGNO because we are meeting first time in the distance education, I mean distance, dental council, I thought I'll give you the type of uh, interventions that we are making. The President of India had uh, visited African Union in September 2004 and very fortunate for us, he is also visitor of the university and therefore we have a very close connection with the visitor and there he promised that Indira Gandhi National Open University will provide tele-education to all the 53 countries of African Union. And this is program is going on and we are looking forward to the connectivity. We, our programs are developed, the content is developed, we are ready to teach. The network is creating little problem and we are, we are assured that within the next two, three months this network will be available. And so it may be of interest to distance education, uh, to Delta uh, Council that we will have our reach to all the 53 African countries where also we can make a very good joint intervention because health and agriculture seem to be some important areas where we can jointly intervene. With these words, I would say that IGNO feels it a great honor that distant, the, 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 the dental council, as a matter of fact, many times I call distance education because <laughs> there is a distance education council of which I happen to be chairman. Yeah. And so that is DEC and this is DCI. So uh, I'm sure that the two organizations will put uh, their efforts together and we are going to succeed the way we have succeeded. All these networks that we mentioned besides that we are setting up 20, I mean uh, 40 FM radio stations across the country and they are all dedicated for education. This is available for you. And now I will request uh, 
Dr. Anil Kohli, as uh, our Vice Chancellor has told uh, that he is a recipient of uh, Padam Shiri, Padam Vision and uh, BC Rai Award also. I will request him to uh, say a few words to this August thing. Thank you. It is a historic movement for us and we are being uh, privileged to be the first one from the medical side to join hand with the IGNO. When I took over one and a half year back, so I had some ambition to fulfill and as uh, Vice Chancellor told when I had a meeting with the President of India, so he talked about video tele telemedicine and all those things and we always complained we have 200 dental schools and we are having shortage of teacher. He said why don't you try. So in less than one year that is going to be reality where we are going to have the teaching facility available to us where one teacher can be exposed to the 10 dental schools and which is going to be a big landmark in the history and especially in the medical education normally people think dentistry is the last but dentistry is going to be the first one. Thanks to IGNO colleagues, a special thank to Dr. Bhaskar Rao who has been instrumental in bringing along with Mr. Arora from the IGNO and they have worked very fast and within I think less than 2-3 months we have to made it a reality. With this we can meet the demand of our dental graduates who thought knowledge hungry, who though knowledge hungry not getting a opportunity to improve their skills. Almost 85% of the dental specialists practice in the urban area as compared to 74% of the population of the country still lives in the surrounding rural areas. If complaints are heard about unemployment among dental doctors, it is perhaps due to the fact that they are unwilling to go places where they are most needed. Till 1959, no postgraduate program was available in India and for number of years it was in 1959 it, it remained confined to Bombay where they had limited seat about 30 were available to the entire country. Subsequently that training PG started spreading through the length and breadth of the country and today we have 130 recognized and other 75 approved dental colleges from where about 15,000 dentists, dental graduates are passing out. But if you compare this 15,000 dentists, there are only 1,700 seats available for the postgraduate. So it makes 1 is to 10. When you look on the medical side, there are 22,000 graduates are admitted and they have 11,000 postgraduate programs. So in this direction, first thing we did last year, we recognized all the DNB Diploma at National program equivalent to the master's degree in the country and which is going to be reality in time to come. Then the second stage comes the people those who cannot get because the medical education, dental education has gone to the private sector and it is too expensive. It is only for the elite. For the common man who is a meritorious student with 90 percent, he doesn't get a seat and all that. This we are opening the door for the people those who cannot get into that with the least amount of money with sharing the knowledge and they can come to the expectation of the people and the services can be reached to the common man which is our goal ultimately. I am on behalf of Dental Council of India and on my own behalf thank IGNO for this MOU. We assure you sir that we will put forward a very well practical oriented program for maintaining the standards. It must appear to the dental teacher as a chalk face and not only in the word changing but the face of the change is gathering speed. The pressure for change in dental education is perhaps greater now than it has been at any time in the previous century. These pressures can be classified as firstly radical changes to the way in which higher education is funded, secondly new approach to the curriculum design and thirdly advances in the clinical practice and the way in which it is managed and funded. I am very hopeful that our this initial collaboration with IGNO will go a long way so that in the long run we can include our other specialties as well. The taste of pudding is in the eating. Let us hope that our endeavor become popular among our dental graduates so that we can provide better dental care to the clientele. After all, Dental Council of India aspire to produce doctors who are compensated, courteous, who care for the people who think honestly, logically, scientifically, who are patient and patients who may both listen and hear, who are motivated to practice of dentistry because they wish to serve the people, doctors who recognize and believe in the improvement of the person. This is our theme and I think 
this is going to be a landmark with these words i'll say thank you and once again i am really grateful for all of you for helping us to bringing up to this day thank you दान कोशिश क्योंकि सास भी कभी बहुत ही हैव समथिंग इन कॉमन इट्स नॉट जस्ट द लेटर के बट आल्सो हाई टीआरपी रेटिंग्स राइट फ्रॉम द ग्रैनी ऑफ द हाउस टू द लिटिल बेबी सिट टुगेदर एंड वॉच देयर फेवरेट सीरियल्स विदाउट मिसिंग अ सिंगल एपिसोड नाउ द जनरल अजम्पशन ओवर हियर इज दैट दीस सीरियल्स केटर टू द एडल्ट मेंबर्स ऑफ द फैमिली बट अ रिसर्च कंडक्टेड बाय अ ग्रुप ऑफ मास कम्युनिकेशन स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम आईपी कॉलेज has revealed that an astonishing number of children are falling prey to these melodramatic family stories the question asked is why to find answers to this question welcome to the tea time club and i'm your host for the evening aprajita in the studio we have with us neha pati sandhya ramachandran manji mahajan hi aarti anand hi kripa narayanan hi and Dan- danushri das gupta These girls have conducted surveys on the effects these TV soaps have on young minds. So, Aarti, could you tell us about the interview with uh, Mr. Prashant Jha, who is a psychoanalyst? Yes, and I must say that the results he gave me was surprising. Uh, his main objective of this research was to know how many children are watching uh, between the age group of eight to eighteen are watching okay. these serials. Uh huh. And uh, the researches went on from September two thousand to January two thousand one. and i have a graph here which says that 70% of these kids w- make it a point to watch at least three such serials okay. out of them 60% fall prey to the uh, narcotic effect and 40% under the ca- uh, catharsis theory now the narcotic effect is where uh, these children seek escape from their real problems through these serials oh, wow. and the catharsis theory is where these serials satiate these children emotionally That's really surprising, Aarti. I know. <laughs> Over to Kripa now. Kripa, you have been speaking to working mothers. Yeah. These women have hardly any time for their general activities at home. They have a very tight schedule, and still they manage to catch up with these serials. So, could you tell us about this? Yeah, Prajita, this this was really interesting because most of the mothers I spoke to were self-confessed addicts, <laughs> <laughs> and also since all of them are working. It's it's very difficult for them to spend enough time with their children, mm-hmm. and after a long day's work, they find it very difficult to come back home and go out, go out on an outing, or you know, mm-hmm. and have a good time. So for them, these serials are not only a form of recreation where the entire family indulges in together, that is on a normal working day, mm-hmm. but according to some, this uh, this provides, this gives them a topic to talk over, you know, over the dinner table to okay. make you know this this. this makes their life more interesting according to them shall have it interesting you know kripa um, i had done a research uh, for the adolescents and uh, accord- according to them this isn't quality time uh, i mean what are they trying to do train us all to be co- couch potatoes one day mm-hmm. i mean um, what's the use of discussing some fictitious story in a uh, on a dinner table when there's real issues to be tackled about that's mm-hmm. a very strong point sandhya manji you have interviewed a producer who is mm-hmm. currently working on a similar project yeah that's right So, what does the producer have to say to justify that? Correct. Um, after talking to the producer, in essence, what I realized was that uh, the programs these days, yeah, they uh, they depict a near yeah. ideal family. Okay. A very evolving family. Yeah. Well, dynamism is the key word. Mm-hmm. You know, efforts are made by the producers to ensure uh, children as audiences, uh, to attract children as audiences. Okay. Uh, so elements such as mood. Swagger, panache, music, color, etc. 
such uh, elements are used to um, get the de desired impact on the audience. Okay. Uh, some prominent aspects such as um, uh, content, time slots, yeah. content, treatment are also kept in mind by the producers. So what uh, really happens is that the apparent immediate impact of the soaps overtakes the child subconsciously. Oh. So uh, children are absorbing these concepts about family bonds which uh, eventually takes them back to their roots. That's very interesting and Mansi, thank you for giving us that part of the picture. Now, uh, Tanushi, what, did you, what do the results of your survey say? Yeah, uh, I spoke to many senior citizens in the course yeah. of my survey and I asked them whether they are happy about the fact that their grandchildren are such uh, ardent viewers of these soaps. Mm. And I concluded that they are not happy. They feel that kids are at a very tender age right now. Mm. And serials like Koshish, Saas, which show conspiracy within the family and extramarital affairs respectively, have a very negative impact on the psyche of the child. And then there's the violence issue, which was very strongly taken up by them. And uh, to support their uh, view, they gave the Shaktiman case example, oh, yeah, which yeah, is like yeah. very prominent yeah. and very known about thing. Mm. Right. Yes. Thank you, Tanishree. That was the elders' viewpoint. Let's see what the children have to say about it. Neha, you conducted a research among children of the age group of 8 to 12 years. So was there something worthy of note there? Certainly there was. Um, I realized that most of these children, they initially started watching these programs because everyone in the family was doing so and yeah. would later talk about it. Okay. These kids did not want to be left out of family discussions. True. But now they follow these programs religiously because they've grown to like them. Um, I also noticed that these children do not indulge in any form of uh, physical activity or social interaction. Yeah. And uh, even if they do, all they talk about uh, uh, are these it's programs. programs and uh, in a sense, I feel these programs are narrowing their horizons and are not letting them grow the way they should. Hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Uh, thank you, ladies. Your efforts in bringing together this program are truly appreciated. Thank, thank you. you. So while some people say that these serials are a form of recreation, others express their concern at the increase in violence and decrease in social activities among children. Producers are still over inducing their serials with an overdose of pseudo-traditionalism and melodrama. Well, you hate it, you love it, but you cannot avoid it. There is no denial that these serials have become a part and parcel of our daily lives. But the amount of extremism that these children are exposed to definitely needs to be altered. Thank you for watching us.